Are you building a full stack solution that's got an ASP.NET Core Web API backend and a .NET MAUI UI? If you are, you need a way for your MAUI UI to talk to your API while they're both running on your developer machine. I'm going to show you the easiest way how. So here on my developer machine, <clears throat> I've got Visual Studio open, and you can see I've got a full stack solution here. So I've got a MAUI UI, a shared fo a project with some, sh some shared types, and I've got a web API. Now I'm just gonna run this web API, and we'll see the first thing that happens is it asks me if I want to trust this developer certificate. So that's one of the first challenges that we've got to overcome. So um, if I want to trust that developer certificate here, I can just click yes. That's gonna open in my browser. We can see that it says secure connection. It trusts that, no issues there. Um, if I want to, I if I want to run this on you know another device like the Android emulator or an iOS phone or an Android tablet, uh, I've got to get that certificate across and I've got to make it trust it. That can be a little bit tricky. Um, it's not impossible, but it, it is it is fiddly and you don't necessarily want to do that. The second problem is that uh, I've got to be able to route to it. So you can see that this is running on local host. <clears throat> now, for, if I were to run my MAUI UI on my Windows machine here, that wouldn't be a problem. A local host would work just fine. Same as if you run it on Mac OS. But if I want to run this on another device, I think the same thing will work on the Android simulator. If you're running this on your Mac and you're running the Android emulator on your Mac, it will work for local host. But if I want to run it on the Android emulator, I've got to change that to an IP address. It's a special IP address 10.0.2.2. The Android emulator routes that back to your host machine. But then if I want to run it on a physical iPhone or an Android tablet or some other device, then I've got to use the IP address of my dev machine on the local network and I've got to open up firewall rules and it's very fiddly. So we've got two problems here. One is the certificate, the other is the address. I'm going to show you a really, really easy way to solve that and that's using uh, something called Ngrok. Um, so this is the website here. You can just go to ngrok.com, sign up, it's free. You can get a free uh, account and there's a free tier for it. Uh, you download Ngrok, it's a standalone executable. Uh, you have to set up an auth key where, when you sign in, it shows you how to do that. Once you've done that, you can just use Ngrok and uh, you can use it on the free tier. Super simple, so I'm gonna, I'm gonna show you how to do that. So we know that we've got the API running here on uh, localhost port 7075. Um, and I can just go Ngrok to start the Ngrok program, tell it what protocol I wanna use, which is HTTP. Uh, give it the address that I want to route to. So I go HTTPS colon slash slash localhost 7075, press enter, and this is going to open a connection to uh, uh, an Ngrok endpoint out on the internet. And what it's done here is it's giving me a publicly routable URL uh, that I can use to access from any machine. It doesn't matter if I'm running it locally on Windows, on my iPhone, on a physical device, emulator, simulator. I can click on this uh, control click and that's going to open it in my browser. We've got a 404, which we expect because this is at the root of the API. Um, but if we see, I can go to slash swagger here. Uh, and this is gonna take a little bit longer because it's got to route out over the public internet and come back. Um, but eventually that's gonna load and we can see that using this publicly uh, routable URL, uh, we get the same, the same swagger page uh, using a, an internet available endpoint. And it's got a certificate that's signed by Let's Encrypt, uh, which we can look at by doing this and we can see that we can trust that. So that's super, super simple. Um, so, you know, don't have to do anything with messing around with different addresses or ports or anything, just Ngrok, and that makes it super simple. Um, I'll show you one other quick trick. Um, so, I did mention that it's a standalone executable, but you saw that I didn't have to navigate to where that executable was. Um, I can just run Ngrok from anywhere. And the way you do that is I, I like to create a folder in my programs folder, uh, folder called Ngrok put the executable in there, add that path as an environment variable, and then I can just run this from anywhere. The last trick that I want to show you is that, um, <clears throat> you know, what, what you might want to do sometimes is run your API in one instance of Visual Studio, and then your, your MAUI app in another, and that's great if you're working on a full vertical slice, uh, and, th and that's where you're working on a feature where there's API uh, code that you need to debug and code in the MAUI app that you need to de debug as well. Sometimes you just want to work on the MAUI app but you need the API running. So you can do that really easily from, from uh, the terminal here. So I'm currently in the folder where this API lives. So I can just go .NET run um, and I can open another tab if you're using Windows terminal. If you're using a, a Mac terminal they will support tabs as well. Um, and I can just run ngrok from here. In fact I'll just uh, bring that back up. And then to make it super simple to see what's happening where, I can rename this tab, call it API, rename this one, call it Ngrok, uh, and then you can change the color of these as well. So I'll give this as kind of ASP.NET Core color. This is a tunnel, so I'm gonna give it this kind of earthy color here, and that's really easy for me to see what's happening where. 
So that's Ngrok, really, really simple to use. Now, if you've got a more complex scenario, let's say you need, uh, I'll give you a real world example. Uh, I've got a product I work on where we've got identity server running, but that serves multiple APIs and client apps. So I need that running on one port. I need my API running on another port. I use Packet Riot for that. I didn't show you Packet Riot here because it's a little bit more complex to set up. And also to have that feature of multiple tunnels running, you need uh, a paid subscription. It's very it's, it's very cheap, um, especially compared to Ngrok. So if you have a more complex scenario, that's worth looking at. But for this, basic, uh, super simple way to get started, just use Ngrok. Let me know what you think. If you've got any other options, I'd love to hear them. Thank you.